Welcome to the Jamoti Podcast. We are all surrounded by amazing coaches and leaders. So let's get an inside look at not just what they do, but how they do what they do. After all, becoming the best versions of ourselves is Jamoti, just a matter of doing it. The Jamoti Podcast is powered by Sideline Interactive. Sideline Interactive is the leading manufacturer for high quality, innovative scoring tables and LED video display boards that help coaches and schools bring more excitement to fans, create huge fundraising opportunities, and make their jobs easier. Visit sidelineinteractive.com to check out their amazing products. I can't wait to find out about your favorite style of play to teach because again, I, I know you and we've had a we've had a friendship for a long time, but I mm-hmm. don't know. Uh, if I if I have a good understanding, you know, I know you're a good shooter and, and you played for a great high school coach, but then you've, you know, you played at SMU, you've been all these places. And so, you know, favorite style to teach, what what do you got? Well, so it's funny because, you know, I, I kind of went through like as you kind of go through your playing career and you play for certain guys and then you kind of start trying to developing what you're what you like, you know, like in high school, we were like straight motion three out two in bobby knight just i mean and it was fun to play for because everybody screened for me and it it was (laughs) there was like you and john havens Havens had a great time doing that like go screen for him like okay cool but um but just one of those things where like the more and more i do it like my favorite way and i think probably once i kind of you know kind of figure like been at bridgeport and then through at weatherford and trying to figure out through and like when you have less athletic kids and I kind of got to halt them and I kind of started having this mindset like you know what like it doesn't really matter what type of kids I feel like you have to find ways to get a transition and so teaching the kids how to play in space and spacing and play fast is kind of like and I and I really like I'm a man-to-man guy and I really like picking people up full court and I and teaching kids you know and, and some groups you wouldn't be able to do that but just like pressure defense and try to create situations where the game gets up and down. Um, I think for a couple of things, I think kids like to play that more because yeah. it's, it's more how the game is. Um, and I think, you know, we have, we have, it, we kind of do like stuff motion with the rules and but like our like transition is like, I really like the game when it's fast paced. Um, you know, there's certain things I don't like. I don't love uh, pitch ahead threes. Um, I like paint touches. Like, so some of the stuff that I was like ingrained in whenever I was growing up, I kind of like met, melted in. But, I, but like, if I can get guys to get up and run and jump and play fast and just make it chaotic, I, I, I enjoy that because it's kind of like a controlled chaos. Like, it's not like rolling the ball out. We have, we, we have a lot of structure in our chaos when we do, but it's, putting positions and, and I like, and we shoot a lot. Like we, we do like a two 20,000 shot club. I mean, we probably shot as a, we have like 12 guys in our, or 15 guys in our, in our two athletic periods right now. And we probably shot an over 40 shot, 40,000 threes as a team, because I think that's the great equalizer, you know, if you're smaller. Um, and so, you know, and now it's hard in high schools. You can't really like, like this year, for example, we were, we were kind of, we were huge. And so we didn't have any guards. And so it's kind of hard to play in transit if we don't have guards. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I had to pick a way to play, I just yeah. just having that freedom for kids to get out and play in space. And I'm not a big – I don't like dribbling, you know. Now we have some rules. Like we're, we, we don't allow them to drive like – if I, if I drive and pitch it to you, like you can't you can't drive off of a, off of a drive and pitch. You know, you have to – you know, we got that Shoot from, it or move it. Yeah. Shoot it or move it, you know. And it's yeah. just probably simple rules like that. Um, teaching kids spacing because I think if you teach the kids like if you teach them how to play you can run whatatever you want to run with them you know if they know if they know spacing if, if they're all they know is like how to so if we that's so that's my way and, and, and it's a lot different than when I played in high school and even in college it was more like you're gonna come down and we're gonna we're gonna screen a bunch and we're gonna get move it and we're gonna throw it inside and we're gonna we're gonna work till we get open shots you know, we're not going to get in transition as much unless it's off of like turnovers and stuff. So, um, but I think, because I even think like this, even if you have like teams that aren't as athletic, I feel like you can be still good in transition because if there's 80 possessions in a game and 30 of them are in transition or 30, you have 30 transition opportunities or you push it every time you can, they might 
do a great job 70 times in transition. But if they mess up 10 times in transition, that's 10 opportunities you weren't yeah. going to have. And because I think it's really, really hard to play five on five. You know, that, like, that, that's a good point. You, you might, yeah. if you're the lesser athletic team, you might want to play in transition more because uh, to create five on fours, four on threes to play against a disorganized defense because you just write, you're right on the money. You against another, a more athletic, bigger, faster, stronger team, five on five in the half court, man, I give the advantage to them. Yeah, you're going to, you, you might get challenge jump shots, you know? Um, yeah. And then it was, it was funny because, and then you can kind of make says, you know, we actually went through a, you know, a stretch because we were, we were, we had a different group this year. So we got certain teams we played, like we played the Birdvilles and the Richlands, and they were really, really tough teams. And, you know, we, we were competitive in some of them. They still beat us pretty good, but we had some good moments, but we would, like we'd always want to try to attack and transition. We got to a point where we would try to attack and transition. We didn't have anything, then we pull it out, and we just kind of make them come get it. So it's like we were playing fast and slow. And I tell our kids all times, like, Hard hey, if, if if you like transition is your time. Like you have freedom to play. If it's in the half court, it's me because I'm going to control the half court because I'm mm -hmm. going to dictate what we get for the most part. Because especially when you're less talented, you know. Um, um, and so it's like if you, people want to play fast, but they don't want to play fast. They don't want to run hard. They don't want to do the right things. They just want to come down and shoot quick, bad shots. And so it's just teaching yeah. the kids that way. And, and I really enjoy it. Like I enjoy coaching it. Um, you feel like you have a little bit less control. Oh, you definitely you have kinda, less control. You kind of do. <laughs> you, I mean, but I also feel like those, that moment between like the second and third quarter, you know, yeah, it is like first quarter, you come out like there's adrenaline, people make people always make shots. It's like, and then that that middle stretch is where I think transition takes over the game. I think there's a lot of opportunities for those runs because it kind of you know it is how the game goes. And then you put yourself in position those last five minutes to try to grind out a game. And so that's kind of how we we that's that's really like how I like to play. Um and I know sometimes in high school you can't do those sort of like we can't run and jump. Um, when you have a bunch of big slogan guys, you had to do some different things. But if I had to choose, that's what I would. If I was recruit, if I was recruiting people, if I would, you're recruiting if I college, people. I would be getting all six, 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 seven fellows. We'd switch everything. We would we'd run and jump and scramble around and get up and down. But that's so interesting because I I know you like that's not how you played in high school. You definitely mm -hmm. didn't do that in college. Mm -hmm. And so, at what point did you? Where'd that switch come from? I think it just came from like just the just as the game evolved too, because you know how it is the game is completely different. Um, and you know, finding ways like when I was at Bridgeport, you know, went to Bridgeport and they hadn't won a game in like three years, like it was something crazy like that. And so just trying to figure out how to be competitive and then trying to do some things we did in high school, and then you know, the 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 th the four A level, you can do a little bit, you can play differently because not as necessary as good depth of players and then you get to like what well, was at weatherford and i tried to do some of the same things we're playing the arlington buoys of the world i'm like no nah, those, those guys are doesn't matter you like you better you can't not guard people because they're just you know <laughs> and so uh and then when i kind of kind of went through weatherford and then got to halt them i just kind of started getting things like man like how can we get easy baskets because you know you know like if you're shooting Layups and free throws, you're probably going to win. I mean, if you make the most layups and free throws, and even like when you go back and like we go back and scout teams that shot the ball really well, it's like they're going to make, they might make 10 threes or 11 threes. But what usually when those teams usually win and beat you is because they're hitting those threes and then now you're over pursuing and now they're getting layups. And the layups and the free throws is what beat you, not the threes. And so I'm uh, just trying to figure out how can we put our kids in position to get easy buckets and then like even like the way the game is going if you do have kids that are able to play the next level like that's how the game is the yeah, game is more developing them really well you know? too yeah. yeah and so and i also feel like just teaching them spacing you know I, we we don't really like have like uh like from the from the middle school up like like a structured offense and then we just do that with every group we just try to teach teach the kids to play in space without dribbling, you know, give them certain cues. Um, 
And then, you know, I'm really, it's funny because, you know, I was probably like the worst defender ever in high school and college. And I'm like, <laughs> like if you can't guard, you can't play for me. I probably wouldn't play. You know? If your high school so, coach could hear that, it'd be yeah, like, it'd be funny. what did yeah, you say? Like, Man, what, what this guy? He couldn't guard anybody. And so, you know, I, I'm really like just building that like toughness, getting up, making people uncomfortable. Um, because I feel like if you can make people play one-on-one, you've won. And if you are having to play one-on-one, you're going to, you've lost. Even if you win or lose the game. Like if we can get, it was funny. We, I remember playing, I was at Weatherford and we were playing uh, North Crowley. And we went through this little thing. We had it called a double fist. And basically I would, we'd get in two, three zone and I look at, and they'd call their zone offense and then we'd go to man. And then I look at the coach, they go, and it went back and forth. And they, I remember we were playing at our place and the point guard looks at Brack when he goes, He's like, they keep switching. He's like, you're better than them. Just drive by them. And I looked at him. I was like, that's right. So they ran their man off. It's, it's harsh, but like, it's what? true. <laughs> but it's true. It's like, it's like, and so it's just those things. It's like that. It just, it's just funny. So, you know, but. Um, two, two things, two things on Cause I love, I love the, the decision that you have made to play to play your style. And, and I feel like we, we align, which is funny too, because it's a, a style I didn't play either. It, it's, I've all, I've thought this way. We, you and I now coach the styles that we wish we would have played. Yeah. Like I love coach Thomas and, and he did allow my senior year a little more freedom because there's two NBA players on our team yeah. and that was pretty smart, you know, and, and, and me and hammock, we're okay. And so, yeah. but, but, but in college for sure. I mean, we ran flex quite a bit. Mm. And so, I like I like teaching an offense that or a style of play that I would have loved to play myself. Oh, yeah. Two things that you said that I jumped out. One, the, like the threes, I, we actually talked to our guys about all of the threes that we shoot being a little bit of smoke and mirrors. Mm-hmm. Um, our goal is to get up thirty to forty attempts a game. We never talk about makes because if we get up thirty to forty attempts, and we're that means that we're creating the type of defensive closeouts and pressure that we want to stop that so that the paint is wide open. Mm-hmm. And that's why we, I mean, there's years where we shoot a really high percentage in the paint compared to what we do everywhere else. And, but we're okay with all the attempts because of that illusion of uh, we're playing Westbury and uh, their coach yells his bench. All they do is shoot threes. And I thought, you know, we got them like yeah. at that point, because they're going to start to, close out differently their help will be farther away Mm -hmm. uh towards other guys and and then the second thing i i just i don't i wanted to make sure i got you straight you said you don't like pitch ahead threes i'm i'm not a i now if i have like a special guy like i would shoot the pitch ahead three that's what i'm saying (laughs) no but like i don't love it because i always feel like if we're if we're in transition because a couple things you know one of the reasons why I do like to play, uh, why I do like to play up tempo, is I feel like when you're smaller or you're less athletic, you you have the ability to rebound more. You know, because you're you're really in transition. I think, and, and I thought of this like like how many people work on transition blockouts? There's always somebody free. There's, yeah. It's really hard to block out in transition, so you can be like a if if you can teach your kids to play. I mean, for most, example, like most this, blockout drills are controlled. Yeah. And, and so like, you know, the, the pitch ahead three, I don't ever feel like we have people in place to rebound. Cause usually you think about it, it's like a pitch out, we pitch it ahead. It's either like a make or a miss. And it's like, and so, you know, I want to give our kids opportunities. It's like, for, like we were, we, it was weird. We had a weird year. Like we, we were one of the biggest teams and I had like a couple bad injuries and we turned into like this small young team but we averaged i mean i remember we went and played Dent ryan with a bunch of little fellas and we had 20 offensive rebounds wow and i think if you can teach your kids to play really really hard you can shoot some of these transition shots and it's going to lead to easy baskets or mm-hmm. multiple opportunities um and so like unless you're like a 40 plus percent shooter guy which you know, if you have one of those guys like I don't love it because if you're like, if I'm thinking about a time we get a rebound, we outlet it, we drill, we pitch the head. There's nobody really inside the three point line to yeah. do that. And so, um, so for me, like percentage wise, I feel like, well, it's a 40%, it's a, it's a 33% shot. So 
that's not bad, but if I have somebody rebounding, maybe it's a, you know, maybe we get two of those, you know, now, now it bumps up that percentage. So that's really the only reason I don't like it. Um, okay. Like I said, when I had Keontae, I mean, that dude, if you pitch it, you can shoot it, you know, because you don't have those type of kids. But as a general rule, I'm, and I always think like, oh, well, if – now, I do like the walk-up three. So if we pitch it ahead and we walk up, we, we take that one. Um, I always feel like if I pitch it ahead and nobody's in front of you, you can probably get a paint touch. Yeah, that's true. Think about how do most people shoot. Like, everybody has shootaways and doctor dishes. Where do the shots come from? It comes from the paint. And so just trying to put the kids in the positions where they work on. Like, those are the shots I feel. Because we started getting, you know, like on our scout report stuff, we started looking at – you know, we started. I got, I got more about playing players instead of playing. Um, I kind of get off topic, but kind of instead of playing against the teams to a degree. And we start like statting these, statting each kid, and I'm like, okay, well, he shoots. You know, he's twenty percent driving left pull up. He's thirty percent driving right pull up. Shots from driving pitch. He's sixty percent on threes. He's 20%. So it's like you look at the overall scale, like he's only a 30% three point shooter. But if that guy drives and pitches it to him, he's really, really good at that, you know? Yeah. And so just trying to teach our kids, like, try to find those high percentage shots because, you know, there's very few kids that can dribble into jumpers. I mean, there's very few kids. Yeah. It's a unique skill. Ones can. It's a unique skill. So you need that skill. And so just trying to put these kids in position, like, and really for like those role player type kids, you know, it's, I mean, you can like watch some of the playoff, like, like the Mavericks playing right now. A lot of their guys making shots, like the, the, the Bull, Bullocks and the Finney Smiths and the Cleavers, Kleba and all, like, they're just going to catch and shoot. And so they're not going to be able to make a play. So they're trying to put themselves in position and, you know, the special guys that can make plays. And that's why you like, you know, teach those guys. You know, in transition, give it to the guys who can create and then try to create for those guys that aren't going to be creating. And so that just going to make us better, you know. So, um, and that's yeah. just kind of my whole philosophy on it. And I know, and, and I not really like over my career, like we don't have a lot of wins, but I feel like my whole goal is just to be playing our best basketball by the end of the year mm -hmm. and doing it the right way, yeah. you know. And I feel like we do that and you're, you're successful. I think people judge success differently, but that's just kind of how I judge success. So. No, I mean, you're, yeah, you're right on the money with success. If you're only basing it on wins and losses, then yeah. crap. I mean, there's only a handful of successful teams a year, mm -hmm. but, but there's tons of people that overcome that they, they have some adversity that, I mean, most teams will fall apart and they still figure out a way to do great things or, or they're just improving and it's not at the mm -hmm. rate that you need it to, but they're still improving. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want you to know, um, I, I accept your answer. Okay. <laughs> uh, when you first said it, you know, I, I mentally just kind of, kind of flinched, but you're right. I get the offensive rebounding thing. Um, I've gotten to a place where, I don't know if it's a good place, but I try to judge every shot, um, based purely on like, we have a shot scale, a rating mm -hmm. scale that we, that all of our guys live by and, and we all communicate by So there's a lot of clarity there. And I try to judge the success of a possession just based on the rating of the shot that we get. So yeah. time doesn't matter. Passes don't matter. Uh, guys down the floor to rebound don't matter because, I mean, getting what we would call a seven, an eight, or a nine, yeah. like, it's hard uh, the, yeah. the, to turn down one. Mm -hmm. hoping that another one will come is dangerous to me yeah. Yeah. but that but that's just where i've gotten to with that but but your idea of because a focus of ours and i think if you if you want to be a great offensive rebounding team it's something that you have to focus on yeah. because it rarely happens mm -hmm. uh based on hope oh yeah yeah i mean you, and we like i said that's part of like our grades like i have like a grade sheet that, and we sit down with our coaches at the beginning of the year and we're like what do we need to do to be successful and we make a great sheet. And it's like, we, we feel like our kids are doing these things. The kids are doing these. We're gonna, this is going to put ourselves in the best chance to be successful. And so, you know, we grade no going to rebound. Is we just try to hold them accountable for that. And, and you have, it's, it's not the drills. I think it's kind of like you have to just do it, you know, um, and just get kids to pursue, especially when you're small, like defensive rebounding. You got to pursue. 
five guys. It's like you gotta you, you gotta block it. You gotta put bodies on people. It's probably gonna if you're a little fella, you're probably gonna get below the rim rebound. So if you go stand with people, you're not gonna get it. Just just that consistency. Yeah. But but to your point, like I don't think there's any right and wrong way. But like it's like what do you choose to work on? Like that's right. You probably you can't should do shot. You can't price. do everything. Yeah. So what and do so, you choose? Yeah, if you shoot, like you shoot, like you probably work on pitch head shooting. Um, and we we kind of like have our stuff based off of pitch head attack and, and just have certain ideas um, because just of how we design stuff. And so, like I yeah. said, you know, it is like there's all different types of ways to be successful. And it doesn't matter what you do. It's just what you decide to commit and how you what your plan is. Thank you for checking out today's episode. Please take a moment to subscribe to this podcast share it with your fellow coaches and find us on social media for what's coming up next on the Jamoti podcast. It's just a matter of doing it.